Okay, ready to dive into the world of chemical engineering. Let's do it. You might be thinking beakers and test tubes, but trust me, this field is way cooler than it sounds. Yeah, forget those stereotypical images. We're talking about how some seriously ingenious minds took chemistry out of the lab and into the real world. Exactly, where it really makes a difference. You already know a bit about chemical engineering, but this deep dive is going to give you that aha moment where you see its fingerprints everywhere. I think you'll be surprised by just how much chemical engineering impacts our daily lives. So to really appreciate it, we're going way back to the 18th century, right in the thick of the Industrial Revolution. Think steam engines chugging away thanks to James Watt's brilliance. Oh yeah, a true game changer. Or John Roebuck figuring out how to produce sulfuric acid on a massive scope using that lead chamber process back in 1746. Sulfuric acid essential for so many industries, even back then. What's fascinating is that these two seemingly unrelated inventions, they sparked a need, well, more like a demand, a need to wrangle materials and scale up production in ways no one had even imagined before. Right, because suddenly we had these groundbreaking inventions, but we needed a way to produce them on a larger scale to meet the growing demands of the Industrial Revolution. And bam, that's where chemical engineering stepped onto the scene. It bridged that gap between scientific discovery and practical application. So it was like the missing link between the laboratory and the factory floor. Exactly. It's about taking those brilliant ideas and turning them into real-world solutions on a massive scale. Fast forward to the late 1800s and early 1900s, things started getting official. We've got George E. Davis, the father of chemical engineering, dropping his game-changing handbook in 1887, a handbook of chemical engineering. A groundbreaking text that really helped to define the field. And over in the U.S., MIT launched its chemical engineering program, forever changing the game. MIT always at the forefront of innovation. This wasn't just about mixing stuff in a lab anymore. Right, it was about merging the power of chemistry with the practicality of engineering to solve real world problems. Okay, so let's break down this real world problem solving. We're talking large scale production, the kind that built our modern world. It's like this, imagine building a car, but instead of starting from scratch, you have pre-made parts. Engines, wheels, transmissions, all ready to be assembled. Modular design, a brilliant concept. And that's kind of what Arthur D. Little did for chemical engineering in the early 20th century with his concept of unit operations. Unit operations, I've heard that term before, but a refresher would be great. He broke down those big, complex chemical processes into smaller, more manageable steps. These unit operations, they're like the building blocks of chemical engineering. So instead of one giant intimidating recipe, you've got a system, a set of building blocks you can rearrange and optimize to create different processes. Precisely. Each unit operation has a specific job. And by linking them together, you can create a whole production line, making everything from gasoline to those life-saving medications. Give us some examples. What are some of these unit operations in action? Take distillation, for example. You know how different liquids boil at different temperatures? Yeah, basic chemistry. Distillation uses that to separate mixtures, like getting pure water from salt water. Ah, desalination essential in many parts of the world. And to design these towering distillation columns that work efficiently on a massive scale, engineers use something called the McCabe Seal method. So it's not just about knowing different boiling points, it's about harnessing that knowledge to design equipment that can purify tons of material. Exactly. And then there are heat exchangers, unsung heroes in countless industries. They transfer heat between fluids without actually mixing them. Like uh, your car's radiator keeping the engine from overheating? Perfect example. And chemical engineers use equations to make sure those heat exchangers are perfectly sized and designed for the job. It's fascinating how these seemingly simple concepts are the backbone of so many industries. It is. And speaking of industries, this brings us to a major turning point, the discovery of oil and the rise of the petrochemical industry. Talk about a game changer for chemical engineering. Suddenly, we had this abundant resource crude oil, but we needed to transform it into something useful. And guess who figured out how to do that? Chemical engineers to the rescue, as always. You got it, they cracked the code. Literally, Dragging. think of it like this. You have this long tangled chain and you need to break it down into smaller, more manageable links. That's cracking. Breaking down large hydrocarbon molecules in oil into smaller, more useful components like gasoline or diesel. Ah, makes sense. So it's like taking those big complex molecules and refining them into the fuels and chemicals we rely on every day. Exactly. 
And then there's polymerization, where you take those smaller links and connect them in different ways to create entirely new materials. That's how we get things like polyethylene, the plastic we see everywhere from those smaller hydrocarbon building blocks. You got it. It's all about manipulating those molecular Lego blocks to create the materials we need. It's amazing how chemical engineers went from those early industrial processes to shaping the materials that surround us every day. It's a testament to the power of this field to innovate and adapt. But let's face it, for some, chemical engineering still sounds about as exciting as watching paint dry. And that's where they're wrong. This field is anything but boring. Trust me, once you see the career paths it opens up, you'll be amazed by its impact. Let's dive into that right after this quick break. Okay, so we've established chemical engineering isn't just about equations and lab codes. It's about making a real world impact for sure. But what does that actually look like out there in the world? What kind of careers are we talking about? Well, for starters, imagine playing a role in developing life-saving drugs and therapies. Now, that's something I think we can all get behind. That's the world of pharmaceutical chemical engineering. Okay, so it's not just chemists doing their thing in the lab. Nope. It's about understanding that intricate dance of chemical reactions needed to create medications safely and effectively, and then, this is key, scaling those processes up, up, up to help people all over the world. It's incredible to think that chemical engineers are at the forefront of medical advancements like that. Oh, they're making it happen every day. But it's not just about healthcare, is it? Not even close. Yeah. Chemical engineers are also major players in the energy sector. Huge players. Okay, so we're talking fossil fuels, renewables, everything. And we're talking optimizing those traditional energy sources, you know, to squeeze every ounce of efficiency out of them. Got to make the most of what we've got. Absolutely. While simultaneously developing renewable energy technologies like solar, wind, and biofuels to power a greener future, it's a balancing act for sure. It's like they're juggling these two crucial tasks at once, making sure we have the energy we need today while building a more sustainable tomorrow. And speaking of things we need today... I see where you're going with this. Let's not forget about something we literally can't live without food. Ah, uh, yes. The culinary arts meet chemical engineering. Exactly. Chemical engineers play a vital role in ensuring our food is safe, delicious, and nutritious. They're the ones figuring out how to preserve food for longer, how to enhance those flavors, and even how to boost the nutritional value of what we eat. They're like the unsung heroes of the grocery store aisle. It's amazing to think about how much work goes into something as simple as pouring a bowl of cereal in the morning. Right. It's mind-boggling when you start to peel back the layers. Speaking of layers and peeling them back, one of the most important things about chemical engineering is that it equips you with a powerful set of problem-solving skills. Absolutely. And those skills extend far beyond the lab. Oh, I bet. Give us the rundown. You learn to analyze data, create those complex models, design those precise experiments, and perhaps most importantly, optimize processes for maximum efficiency. So you're not just learning theory, you're learning how to apply it in the real world, how to make things better. Precisely. And these skills are in high demand. I'm talking across a vast range of industries. So it's not just about memorizing equations. It's about knowing how to apply them to solve those real world problems. You hit the nail on the head. Think about environmental protection, for example. A critical area where we need all the brain power we can get. Chemical engineers are leading the charge in developing solutions to reduce pollution to treat that wastewater, to manage waste responsibly, and to create cleaner technologies for a healthier planet. It's like they're bridging that gap between theoretical knowledge and tangible solutions. Precisely. They're not just talking the talk, they're walking the walk, using their expertise to tackle some of the most pressing challenges facing humanity. And we need people on the front lines like that. We do, and they're out there, making it happen. Like in the field of renewable energy, for instance, mm. chemical engineers are the ones developing those more efficient solar cells, exploring biofuels from sources like algae. We talked about them earlier. Such a promising source of sustainable energy. And working tirelessly on those hydrogen fuel cells to propel us toward a cleaner energy future. They're pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Absolutely. And you mentioned biofuels, which brings us to another exciting frontier where chemical engineering is making waves biotechnology. Ah, yes, where biology meets engineering, a match made in scientific heaven. It sounds like something out of a science fiction novel. So yeah. what is biotechnology really about? Biotechnology is all about harnessing the incredible power of living systems think cells and enzymes and microorganisms to create new products and technologies that benefit humanity. It's like we're teaming up with nature to solve our problems. Exactly. And you guessed it. Chemical engineers are essential 
for designing and scaling up those bioprocesses. Could you give us an example that really brings this synergy between biology and engineering to life? Something we can really sink our teeth into. Well, fermentation is a fantastic example. It's a natural process that humans have used for centuries to make bread, beer, and other staples. So we're talking yeast doing its thing, breaking down sugars. Exactly. But chemical engineers have taken fermentation to a whole new level, optimizing these processes to produce everything from those life-saving antibiotics we talked about earlier to biofuels like ethanol, all while minimizing waste and maximizing efficiency. It's remarkable how they've taken something so ancient and transformed it into this cutting-edge technology. It really shows you the power of chemical engineering to innovate and adapt. So when we see that equation, C6H1206 messes 2C2H5OH plus 2CO2, it's more than just letters and numbers on a page. It's a recipe for change. That seemingly simple equation represents glucose, a type of sugar, mm -hmm. being transformed by those microscopic workhorses, microorganisms, into ethanol, which can power our cars, and carbon dioxide, which, with the right technologies, can even be captured and repurposed. It's like a closed loop, a sustainable cycle. Precisely. And chemical engineers are the ones fine-tuning this delicate dance between biology and industrial production, ensuring that we can harness the power of nature in a way that's both efficient and sustainable. It's a great example of how chemical engineering takes inspiration from nature to create innovative solutions. And speaking of innovation, there's one more game changer we can't ignore digitalization. Ah, yes. Digitalization is revolutionizing every aspect of chemical engineering, giving us unprecedented power to design, optimize, and even predict the behavior of complex systems. It's like giving chemical engineers a superpower, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Imagine creating a virtual replica of an entire chemical plant, a digital twin. A digital twin. Okay, now you're just showing off. So it's like a computer simulation of the whole operation. Exactly. You can run simulations, tweak parameters, and optimize every single step of the process before even breaking ground on construction. It's like having a crystal ball that shows you how the plant will operate before you even build it. That's incredible. And how does this digital revolution impact the day-to-day -day work of chemical engineers? They're using cutting-edge software to simulate and analyze processes, employ computational fluid dynamics to understand how fluids behave in those intricate systems, and leverage the power of machine learning and artificial intelligence to analyze mountains of data and optimize those processes in real time. So it's not just about knowing the chemistry and the engineering principles, it's also about being tech savvy to thrive in this rapidly evolving field. Absolutely. A solid foundation in programming, data analysis, and those powerful software tools is becoming essential for chemical engineers. This field is truly on the cutting edge of technology. It's mind blowing to see how far chemical engineering has come and the incredible advancements it's enabling us to make. And we're just getting started. But we'd be remiss if we didn't address the elephant in the room, sustainability. It's no longer just a buzzword, it's a necessity. And chemical engineers are at the forefront of this critical movement. Absolutely. Chemical engineers are playing a pivotal role in developing those eco-friendly processes and finding ways to reduce our impact on the planet. It's a top priority for sure. Let's delve into that intersection of chemical engineering and sustainability. Where are they making the biggest difference? So we're talking about sustainability, a challenge where chemical engineering really shines. What are some of the key areas where this field is making a difference? It's all about finding ways to do more with less, less energy, less waste, and a smaller environmental footprint. One major area is green chemistry. Green chemistry sounds like a trendy term, but what does it actually mean in the context of chemical engineering? Imagine a world where we design chemical products and processes that minimize or eliminate hazardous substances right from the get-go. That's the essence of green chemistry. It's about using renewable resources whenever possible, mm -hmm. you know, like plant-based materials, instead of relying solely on those fossil fuels. So it's about making smarter choices from the very beginning. Absolutely. Reducing waste at every single step and finding ways to make those chemical reactions more efficient so we use less energy and produce fewer of those unwanted byproducts. It sounds like chemical engineers are becoming the ultimate environmental stewards. Do you have any concrete examples of how they're putting these green chemistry principles into practice, like real-world applications? Absolutely. Remember how we talked about cracking those long hydrocarbon chains in oil? Yeah, breaking them down into smaller molecules. Well, that process, along with countless others, relies heavily on catalysts. Catalysts, those substances that speed up chemical reactions without being consumed themselves. Exactly. They're like the ultimate facilitators in the chemical world. Think of them as the matchmakers 
of chemical reactions. They bring those reactants together, help the reaction happen faster. And the beauty is they themselves don't get used up in the process. They're just there to make things happen. Fascinating. So by using the right catalysts, chemical engineers can achieve those reactions, but with less energy, less waste. Precisely. They can make those reactions happen at lower temperatures and pressures, which, think about it, saves a tremendous amount of energy and, of course, reduces that unwanted waste. So catalysts are like the efficiency experts of the chemical world. And we see them in action in all sorts of industrial processes, right? Oh, absolutely. A classic example is the Haber-Bosch process. The one that produces ammonia. You got it. Right. Which, as you know, is a key ingredient in those fertilizers that help feed billions of people around the world. No small feat. It's essential for global food production. This process, it relies on a simple but remarkably effective iron-based catalyst. Without it, we'd need much higher temperatures and pressures, which would just gobble up far more energy and resources. And that means higher costs, more pollution. Exactly. It's a domino effect. So by optimizing these processes, chemical engineers are playing a vital role in feeding the planet, but doing it sustainably. It's a perfect example of how this field is tackling those global challenges head on. Incredible how this all connects. Any other examples where they're making a big difference, maybe in the realm of materials? Because we're surrounded by them and we know a lot of them are not so great for the planet. Think about the plastic we encounter every single day. It's everywhere, for better or for worse. Chemical engineers, they're hard at work right now developing bioplastics. Bioplastics made from what plants? You got it. Made from those renewable resources like cornstarch or sugarcane, instead of relying solely on petroleum. Okay, so they're plant-based, that's a good start. But what about after their useful life? Because plastic, well, it hangs around. That's the beauty of it. They're engineering these bioplastics to be biodegradable or compostable, offering a much more environmentally friendly alternative to those traditional plastics, which, as you said, they just hang around for way too long. It's like they're redesigning the materials we use every day, making them more sustainable from the ground up. That's the goal, to create a more circular economy where materials are reused and repurposed rather than ending up in those landfills or polluting our oceans. Absolutely. And speaking of big challenges, what about the whole issue of carbon emissions and climate change? That's a big one right at the top of the list for a lot of people these days. You're right. Tackling climate change is a top priority. And chemical engineers are on the front lines of developing those carbon capture and storage technologies. So instead of those emissions going into the atmosphere, we could catch them and store them safely. Where would we even put it all? That's exactly the challenge they're tackling. Finding safe, secure, and long-term storage solutions is critical. We're talking about capturing carbon dioxide emissions from those major sources, power plants, those industrial facilities, before they have a chance to reach the atmosphere. Okay, so we're talking about intercepting those emissions at the source. Precisely and then storing them safely. Think deep underground in those depleted oil and gas reservoirs, or even in saline aquifers, formations that contain salt water. So we're talking about trapping those emissions deep underground. Exactly. And even more exciting, researchers are exploring ways to actually utilize that captured carbon dioxide to maybe create valuable products. So it's not just about burying the problem, it's about potentially turning it into something useful. Precisely. Imagine using carbon dioxide to create construction materials or even fuels the possibilities are incredible. It sounds like something straight out of a science fiction movie. Are we talking about large scale implementation yet or is this still mostly theoretical? It's rapidly moving from those labs and research facilities to the real world. There are already pilot projects and even some commercial scale carbon capture facilities up and running around the world. Chemical engineers, they're working tirelessly to make these technologies more efficient and, importantly, more cost-effective, so we can deploy them on a much larger scale and make a real dent in those carbon emissions. It's both exciting and reassuring to know that chemical engineering is tackling these global challenges head-on. It's clear this field is evolving at lightning speed, embracing new technologies and ideas. As we wrap up our deep dive into the world of chemical engineering, what's the one key takeaway you want our listeners to walk away with today? You know, when you think about it, chemical engineering isn't just about what happens in a lab. It's about solving real-world problems that affect each and every one of us. It's about connecting those dots between science and everyday life. Exactly. Whether it's developing life-saving medications or creating those sustainable energy solutions, engineering those incredible materials of the future, or mitigating the impacts of climate change, this field is all about making a positive impact on the world. And with the incredible pace of innovation, 
who knows what groundbreaking breakthroughs are just around the corner. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? What if you, our listener, had the chance to be a part of engineering those solutions, to tackle those challenges head on, and to shape a brighter future for generations to come? Chemical engineering might just be that unexpected but incredibly impactful path to making a real difference in the world. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. It's been a pleasure exploring the world of chemical engineering with you.